the advantage, of, obviously, of going on. Did, did you know that there was enough out there with that drug for the rest of your session? Um, you could do it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I almost always think I can do it, even if I probably can't. Uh, I think that's that's part of my uh, my attitude when I ride, and, and that I, I always think that, that it can be done. And my bigger problem is usually that uh, sometimes I go too fast or I try too hard, so I have to measure measure the class so I don't do too much. Uh, there was a class last night that BZ ended up winning. I also went last. And I, I turned so short to the second fence, uh, you know, the horse had a little bit of a slip and then, you know, I had to circle out because um, there was no, it was impossible for the horse to jump it. So I was really beating myself up about that um, just because I, I felt like I, I really beat myself. So in today's class, I was more just measuring how, how fast I had to go um, and not try to, to overdo it. You were saying yesterday you win a big class like you did last year and you get that experience and, and, and that's you know it helps you for the future obviously it sure. must have helped today. I, I think this is a this is a sport of resilience, uh, a sport of uh, experience, and that's why you see guys like Ian Miller um, at his age still competitive on a world level, um, and a lot of the top riders in the world are are up to like Nick Skelton, you know, in his fifties, and that just shows you what you know, experience can teach you because there's so much more than just riding in the ring. It's it's picking horses, producing horses, training horses, and um, you know that that's really what the what the game is in the end is being able to repeat performance, and that comes through methodical training and um, good horsemanship. So, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm just gonna, you know, on that note, like your partnership, like you, see, you guys have been together for a, a while now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you seem to have really with each other. Um, like, how would you how would you describe where, where the two of you are at? Um, you know, right right now in, in his career, he he's he's basically learned everything that there is is for him to learn. And now it's it's my job as a as a rider um, and as a horseman to manage his career and try to pick the the right venues and the right classes to aim him towards, so that I can make his career last as as long as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I try to pick the venues where I think he goes well, like uh, a place like here. Um, and you know, now with as much uh, money as there is in the sport, it's really a job of managing horses that are competing at that level so that they can be at their best when it counts. Have you shown him since um, Yep, I did, I did the show in Rome, the Grand Prix in Rome. I had a really cheap rail, but he went, he went great. Um, and then I just gave him a, you know, Little break came here. He's been looking quite. He's looked sort of fresh today. Yeah, I, I, he goes. He's at his best when he's when he's fresh and has a lot of energy. So now that he has enough experience, um, I try not to overshine it and and try and like I said, spot him at the right classes for for good prize money at the at the right venues that suit the horse. All right, welcome Charlie and Reed and uh, Wendy. You can continue. Thanks. Um, uh, I've never measured him actually, but I I guess probably fifteen three. Okay, under sixteen. Okay. Is there advantage on a certain kind of horse um, to have a horse that's kind of small, compact, agile? Um, One turns, I'm thinking those sharp turns that you're able. To I mean, the funny thing about him, he's a, he's a very small horse, but he rides like a very large horse. He actually goes best in in big venues like here. He has a, a massive stride. He's the smallest horse in the class, but he probably has the biggest stride of um, of all the horses in the class. And he's he's pretty he's pretty unique like that. He has exceptionally long legs for his body, and I think that that's why his his gallop is so big. Did you know Reed's time going into your final run at all? Uh, I, I watched her go. I came up to the gate and I watched her go, um, but I didn't. I didn't know the time. I, I was more looking at measuring the measuring the pace and having an idea of of what I needed to do with my horse in order to to be on top of the time. Okay. And then Reed, you obviously had a had a great um, final run there and jump off. Um, knowing Kent was coming after you, was were you able to breathe easy at all at the end of it or? Uh, definitely not. I knew Kent would come. I knew he would be clean and I knew he would be really fast. Um, I just tried to go as fast as I could without making any silly mistakes. 
Um, I've made that mistake of having maybe the vertical end of a combination down a couple times with her, like at the World Cup Finals, so I took a, maybe an extra stride, one more than he did there. And um, everyone had done 10 down the last line, so I thought that I, it would be quite long to leave out nine, so I went kind of wide to line it up, and I actually walked it. I almost thought I was doing eight, so I definitely could have been sharper to the last line. And watching Ken, I think that's those two places definitely where he got me. How would you describe the course? Well, it seemed like very long course. Okay. <laughs> what, what uh, you guys yeah, just, I mean, long lines, long. It was a big trek and a long trek today. Uh, by the time we got down to number 14, the last jump, there was, uh, you, you, you know, if you jump a big course, if you will. Uh, there was, I personally had a lot of horse in my hand. I'm sure you two did as well. Um, and by the time they see that, that in gate, they they want to they want to go home. Right. How pleased were you with your horse? I'm extremely pleased with my horse. Uh, Flaming Star, I thought was fantastic today. Um, for me, this is great for him to come and jump at a meter sixty class. This is our second time ever to Spruce Meadows. Um, we came briefly in 2011 and jumped in some amateur classes, but. He was great today for me, I'll tell you. Um, my hat's off at least two to my right, but uh, I thought he was, he, he just was lights out for me. I, I could have pushed the, the gas a little more, frankly, um, having known with the times that these two turned, and I could have gone a lot faster. Bree, can you talk a little bit about Silana, how she felt? Um, and your, and how you feel about your result here today? Uh, she f couldn't have gone much better, I don't think. Um, she jumped fantastic when I took her to Europe at, in Paris and uh, Gothenburg, mm -hmm. and then she's had a month, uh, over a month off, just hanging out at home. She was really begging to jump this week. <laughs> I was actually going to do another class with her. I was second the first day. I was going to do another class, but um, my fairy was late. She was due to be shot. And she's uh, one of those horses that. She doesn't jump frequently. She's miserable. So she was very happy that it was as massive as it was today. She likes to work hard. Um, Kent, you've now won sort of two of the three championship events this week. Um, how are you feeling going into tomorrow? Um, I, I actually, I'm not really riding tomorrow. My so, apologies. So uh, that. Feeling pretty good. Finish <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this. No, no mistakes tomorrow. Yeah, Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to be carrying the Greg horse or Blue Angel horse? Um, I'll do the Nations Cup with Blue Angel. She needs a little experience doing that. I haven't had the horse so long, so uh, Robert Ridland, the chef de Keefe, and I spoke and, and he wants me to use that horse next week. Can you guys each talk about where you're going to go from here, what you plan on doing next? Sure, well, uh, Hopefully next week we'll be jumping here, um, and then we're headed back east. Uh, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, we're going to jump at Lake Placid. My family rides, my wife and kids, and we're going to go to that show because we can all participate there together. And then we have some, you know, some track, a summer track, uh, not quite like Europe or Rotterdam or anything, but quite like that. Uh, glorious, but we're going to go back and have some fun with our, with our kids. Um, I'm here until the end. I'm going to use uh, Micah for the Nations Cup next week. And um, yeah, I'm really, a, this is my first year. We don't have trials or anything, and I couldn't use my top two horses last year building up to London. So this is the first year I've come here and had um, two horses to use in these major classes. So I'm trying to um, beat this guy. And then I leave for Europe. I just cracked the top 30. Uh, so I'm going to go do the rest of the global tour, hopefully, and extend Dublin and some fun places like that. Are you taking? I'll take all of them. I'll take all, all five of them. I'm planning. I'm not sure if I'm going to come back and do it doors in America. I might just stay and sort of have a fun year going all the places I've always wanted to go. Uh, I'm going to finish showing showing here, and then after the tournament finishes, I'll I'll go to Europe with a small group of horses and a couple students. I'll do some GCT shows and also the Dublin show. Further questions?
Well, congratulations. That was a uh, it was a tough track out there today, and where you let your guard down at any moment, uh, it could catch you. And the three of you were uh, full marks for your performance today. Well done. Horses jumped well, ground held up, and you're uh, deserved winners today. So congratulations. It was an excellent day in the international ring. Look forward to seeing you the rest of the tour. Thank you. Thank you.